If you ever watched some of my videos, you probably know that I like to play around with lithium battery cells. Because of that, I've been searching for a good battery spot welder until Secure offered to send me their new spot welder for review. Spot welders usually come as these small, cheap, rechargeable units, which just don't have the power to be useful for anything remotely close to what I do. The other option is one of those big box style welders which hook up to the mains voltage. From my experience, these welders will more often trip your breaker than actually give you good welds. They are also too huge for me to store such a welder in my workshop, so I needed something in between. The good old K-weld fits this criteria perfectly, but for it you need a huge power supply or a DIY supercapacitor power supply setup, which is again huge and expensive. The supercapacitors are actually the most interesting thing here, and that's what caught my attention when I took a look at the secure spot welder. Supercapacitors charge fast and can output short bursts of incredibly high power. With the secure welder, they give you the compact size, but instead of a rechargeable battery inside, there are two huge supercapacitors which provide this welder with 2500 amps of welding current. The full kit with all of the accessories on screen comes with a price of just $200, and in this video I'll test it out to show you if it's actually worth your money. There is already a ton of unboxing videos on YouTube, so in this video, let's immediately get to the interesting part. The welder comes with a lot of accessories, and I mean a lot. The welder is built from a thick aluminum extrusion, and overall feels very solid. On the front we have the welding cable connections, with a few buttons and a display on top. On the right side we have a USB Type-C connector for firmware updates, which can also be used to charge the capacitors with power delivery. I'll get into how this charging actually works in just a moment. Underneath we have a barrel jack for power and a 3.5mm jack for the foot pedal. On the back we have one more charge port and this one is an XT60. So one welder and three charging ports. Right now you're probably questioning how does this actually work. Well, when you decide to get this welder, you have the option to get a smaller power supply like this or if you want to spend just a little bit more, you can get the beefy one. The workflow goes like this. You connect your accessories to the welder and then connect the power supply. The supercapacitors need just a minute to fully charge after they've been sitting for a longer period of time. And once they are charged, the welder is ready to be used, with no downtime. You don't have to charge it for hours, and you don't have to wait in between the welds. I personally didn't feel such a difference between the power supplies, but I guess the bigger one would keep up easier if you have a lot of welds to make and if you're using thick welding strips. The welder can be powered from the barrel jack or the XD60 on the back, but if you're on the go, you can also connect it to your power delivery power bank and use it that way. The power delivery port is a bit lower in power, so you may need to wait just a second for the capacitors to charge back up. The important thing to understand is that the power doesn't come from the power supply, but the supercapacitors inside, so you will not be limited by power if you're using a weaker power supply. With that out of the way, let's go through the accessories and then prepare yourself for a teardown of this unit. I got the smaller 2 amp charger and the big 15 amp one. For welding nickel and copper strips, we get a set of copper probes like this and a pretty nice welding handle. You can choose which one you want to use and let's quickly go over them. The copper probes have rubberized grips and once removed you get access to two small hex bolts. The probe tips are replaceable, but you can also turn them around to get a brand new tip. When they do eventually get used or damaged, you can also just bring them back to shape with some sandpaper. The welding handle is where things get interesting. The wires usually connect to the top of the handle like this, but if you want to reduce the resistance even more, you can connect them straight to the welding tips. The welding tips are also easily exchangeable and are spring-loaded, which will help you position them on top of a battery with even pressure. The handle also includes a tiny LED light, and on the other side we have a 3.5mm jack, which can replace the ordinary foot pedal with the switch that's internally built into this handle. Inside the kit I also got a foot pedal, which I just mentioned, and it is used to activate the welder. The welder can be activated with the handle or the foot pedal, but there is also an automatic mode which sends power to the tips after the probes have been touching for a set time. Except that we get the wrenches and the screwdrivers, extra bolts for securing the welding wires, and a couple of more accessories. To power up the welder, hold the power button for a second. You can see that the unit is currently completely powered with the capacitors inside, but they would discharge pretty fast if I started welding without an external power supply hooked up. At the top you can see the capacitor charge state, as well as the current voltage. 
you set the power with two pulse options and there is an interval option which gives you a small time delay between the two pulses. I usually set it up to give me a small pulse at the beginning which lightly secures the strip to the battery and lowers the resistance. After a tiny time delay, which is actually not noticeable while welding, the welder pumps out the other pulse which then secures the strip fully in place. This option is pretty cool because it reduces sparks and the chance of a burn through strip. The first pulse option usually stays the same, while the second one gets adjusted depending on the strip thickness. Here we also have the auto option, which allows you to set the time before the welder automatically sends power after the probes have been touching. This can be also set to an external signal in the settings which will allow you to use the foot pedal or the welding handle. In the settings you can turn on even stronger peak power, toggle the handle light, rotate the screen if you want, toggle the beeper and change the language. Other than that, there is a weld count at the bottom right and you can see that I've been using this welder for quite some time. I already watched a couple of videos on YouTube about this welder and all of them skipped the important part of adjusting the power settings. To solve this problem once and for all, I ordered multiple copper and pure nickel strips so I can test each one out and give you the settings which worked for me. For the test, I have prepared a roll of 0.15mm nickel strip and I don't really want to go any lower than this because this thickness can be welded with almost every welder out there. Next up is a 0.2mm pure nickel strip and for the end a roll of 0.3mm strips. 0.3mm strips are pretty hard to weld and my K-weld setup looked ridiculous, so I'm super curious to see how this one will perform. For battery spot welding we usually use nickel strips because they require less energy to weld, but nickel compared to copper is actually a pretty bad conductor. A same sized copper strip compared to a nickel one will conduct up to 5 times more current, but is also a lot harder to weld. I never used copper strips before, just because of this reason. But since Secure said it can be done, I also got three different copper strips to try it out. If it works out, I may switch to copper strips entirely, because they are much easier to get and you don't have to worry about nickel plated scam listings. For the copper strips I have 0.1mm, 015 and 0.2mm. I'll start the test with something I'm already familiar with and that's nickel strips. The 0.15 strip was super easy to weld and I got it on first try. To test that the weld was successful you need to try to rip off the strip from the battery cell and if the strip breaks the weld is good. Let's continue with 0.2mm strip. The same settings worked, but in the end I increased the power just a little bit to make sure that the strip was secured properly. The final test is the 0.3mm strip, which is usually super hard to weld and it requires a lot of energy. I tried the first weld with the same settings as before and you can see how easily I got it off. I increased the power and after a couple of more tries I did get it right. The weld was really good and I had to take my pliers to remove the strip from the battery. The settings I used for the nickel strips are displayed on the screen right now. Let's continue with the copper strips. And the fun part is that I never actually tried welding them. The first strip is 0.1mm. This was surprisingly easy to weld and I actually had to decrease the power a little bit. The strip is super thin so I guess it doesn't require much energy anyways. 0.15mm is next. With the same settings it just popped off, so I had to increase the power. The second weld was ok, but it could definitely be more powerful. The third one did the trick and when I tried to remove the strip, it tripped, which means that the weld was good. The final strip for this test is 0.2mm copper strip. The first weld didn't do anything, so I increased the power, but again I wasn't getting close to a good weld. After a couple of more tries, I maxed out the welder settings and even turned on the stronger power option in the settings. But the welds were still weak. What did the trick was to lower the interval setting and this time the welds were perfect. The welder can definitely handle 0.2mm copper strips, but welding them was not a nice experience as everything got super hot, so I would advise you to not use them if you really don't have to. Here are the settings I used and since the test is finished, let's take a look at what's inside the welder. With everything fully disassembled, we can see that this is a pretty simple device. It's built very well, but I found a couple of 3D printed parts inside which is a little bit funny. If these were 3D printed from ABS filament, which I think they are, the plastics are completely identical to injection molded parts, so I wouldn't really worry about it. The outside enclosure is what matters and it's built right, so the build quality is fine by me. 
on the front of the welder we have a separate PCB which handles the logic, underneath we have a beefy power PCB with the switching MOSFETs and let's just appreciate the size of these supercapacitors, they are huge. At the bottom we can find a serial number which didn't point me to anything but I did see a 3 watt hour rating and since these are 3 volt caps the capacity should be around 2400 farads, here is a 470 microfarad capacitor for size comparison. On the back of the unit we have a PCB which holds the XT60 connector for fast charging and that's about it. This welder performs really good and it also survived my teardown test. I would definitely recommend it if you like the results from the video and if you decide to get one for yourself there is an affiliate link in the description. Big thanks to Secure for sending the welder over and thank you for watching. If you like the video don't forget to leave a like and I'll see you in the next one.